Unlock faster workflows and smarter designs. This quick lesson reveals 3D sketching and sweep tricks that most users miss. Keyboard shortcuts appear in the bottom left corner. Start by creating a new sketch on the horizontal construction plane. This will be the object's natural orientation. Draw a center diameter circle, placing it at the origin. Use your own dimensions if you'd like, but I'm going with a 50 mm diameter. Save time by jumping straight from the sketch to the extrude command using the E shortcut. Set the height to 75 mm if you're following my dimensions. Now shell the body, keeping the bottom intact. Set the wall thickness to 2.5 mm. This offers a solid balance between 3D print quality and speed. Now create a second smaller cylinder inside the first one. We'll turn these into separate components later. To save time, reuse your existing geometry. Start a new sketch on top of the first cylinder and use Sketch Project to capture the inner circle. This creates a linked reference, shown in purple. If you plan to 3D print this, consider adjusting the diameter to leave a small gap. My version stays as is, since it's a digital project and I don't plan to manufacture this. Extrude this new profile all the way to the bottom of the first cylinder. Before you hit OK, change the operation from join to new body. This keeps the two cylinders as separate bodies. Let's do a quick quality check with the section analysis to see where we are. Use one of the vertical construction planes as the cut plane and flip the orientation to get a clear view inside body 1 and body 2. Make sure body 2 reaches all the way to the bottom. The section analysis should clearly show the two separate bodies and their alignment. Now let's start working on the pipe and the path for the sweep cut operation. To keep things simple, begin a new sketch on a central vertical construction plane. Don't overcomplicate it by trying to anchor the shape to the edge of the inner cylinder. Just place it centrally. Use dimensions to set the distance from the top. This distance is important and will come up again, so it's worth remembering. If you want a more flexible setup, consider turning it into a user parameter. Next, extrude the center diameter circle. I've set the diameter to 10 mm and it's positioned 25 mm from the top of the main cylinder. Since the outer cylinder is 50 mm wide, I want this knob to stand out, so I'll give it a length of 35 mm. I'm extruding in the opposite direction, so I'll use a negative value. Before confirming the operation, make sure to switch from cut to new body. This keeps the knob separate, allowing us to manage it independently later on. Now it's time to move the inner cylinder and the knob upwards. The exact distance doesn't matter, as long as the entire knob ends up above the larger cylinder. That's because the sweep cut will only remove material where the path intersects the outer body. Make sure to select both the knob and the inner cylinder. I use the free move option here. It's more flexible than point to point for this kind of move. Don't forget to confirm the new pivot when adjusting the move. It's an easy step to miss. This position works as our starting point for the 3D pattern we'll use to create the final cutout. Next, create an offset plane that sits at the same distance from the top of the large cylinder as the center of the knob. This is why that earlier dimension matters. The goal here is to sketch the sweep path at the correct height, so everything lines up and the inner cylinder still fits properly inside the outer one. Start a 3D sketch on your new offset plane. Begin by drawing a straight line from the origin through the knob. Oversketch it. Don't worry about where it ends just yet. Next, draw another line and use a dimension to define the angle between the two. This angle controls the size of the cut, 
a wider angle means a larger cut in the outer cylinder. Now draw a line from the center of the knob straight down at 90 degrees. It's easy to snap to the intersection with the angled line from the origin. Switch to the top view using the view cube, then draw a center diameter circle starting from the base of that vertical line. Set the diameter to match the length of the knob, in my case 35 mm times 2. You'll end up with a bunch of lines, use trim to clean it all up, keeping only the geometry you need for the sweep cut operation. Now that the setup is complete, the solid body sweep cut will be quick to apply. First, turn off the visibility of the inner cylinder. This ensures you don't accidentally remove material from it during the cut. Set the sweep type to solid sweep and the orientation to perpendicular. For the path, select the 3D sketch you just created. Finally, make sure the operation is set to cut. A quick glance at the sweep shows everything's mostly on track, though we'll handle a few small adjustments later. For now, let's combine the knob with the smaller cylinder. We kept them separate earlier to avoid affecting the sweep. But now that it's done, it's time to merge them. Once combined, go ahead and hollow out the inside of this new body with the shell command. I'll set the wall thickness to 2.5 mm here as well. At this point, you should have two distinct bodies that look something like this. While it's outside the scope of this tutorial, it's worth mentioning. If you plan to create animations or assemblies, you'll want to convert these bodies into components. There are a few ways to do this. One simple method is to right-click each body in the browser and choose Create Components from Bodies. Now's a good time to save your project if you haven't done so recently. Next, we'll use the offset face command to create a small gap between the knob and the cutout path. I'm offsetting it by 0.1 mm. This is just to illustrate the idea and the actual distance can vary depending on your manufacturing method and settings. We'll also fill it the edge to give it a softer, more finished look. We'll fill the knob as well, using some standardized sizes to keep the design consistent and user-friendly, even though we're not considering production methods in this tutorial. Let's wrap up this Fusion tutorial by applying appearances to our components and suggesting a few next videos to check out. For this project, I'm going with a matte finish, which closely resembles the look of many 3D printing filaments on the market. I'll use standardized plastic matte appearances for both components. If you're curious about creating custom appearances, I recommend checking out this lampshade tutorial in my Fusion library. This project was inspired by another tutorial I've linked at the end, so feel free to explore that as well. If you have any thoughts or questions, drop them in the comments below. Thanks for investing your time with this tutorial and I'll see you in the next Fusion project.